in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Let's hold hands together. Please hold hands together. Please hold hands together everywhere. I will praise the Lamb of God who sees upon the throne. I will worship Him and give a prayer. Him alone, He who was and is, and is to come, I will sing before the throne. Someone giving him worship. You are able to do without us. And yet you act like you can. Mighty God, we bless you. We worship you, O oh God of heaven. The maker of the ends of the earth. Thank you for the privilege of worship. Thank you because you are God. There is none like you. Please let worship come from your heart, from the depth of your heart, even on to the king. Bless him in the spirit. Bless him in your understanding. Let your attention be on Jesus tonight. Wow. 
Just a few minutes of connecting deeply and truly with the God of the heaven. You are God that is truly none like you, from everlasting, even to everlasting. We declare that you remain God, majesty. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. making us who we are, for making us what we are. Thank you for Koinonia, for your grace, for your mercy, for your goodness. Parush halabarubiata, for the privilege of fellowship with the Spirit, for the privilege of fellowship with the brethren, for the privilege of fellowship with the world. We thank you. Hallelujah. Father, tonight, let your word come like rain upon a thirsty ground. Please lift your voice and... Such the sweet atmosphere of the Spirit in this place tonight. Let your word come like rain. Until the Spirit be poured up from on high, then it says, the wilderness will be counted for a fruitful ground. Then a fruitful ground for a forest. Hallelujah. Father, tonight, we have come as proof that we love you. We have come tonight as proof that we want to learn, we want to grow, we want to rise to heights and dimensions unimagined. We have come tonight as proof that we are still interested in your dealings over our lives. We have come tonight as proof that we know the one who can change us, who can lift us, who can heal, who can deliver. We have come tonight as proof that we are grateful people, recipients of your mercy and grace. We have come tonight because we are hungry to receive the hallowed bread of the Spirit. We have come tonight because our hearts are thirsty we have searched around and found out that you are the living bread and you are the water of life. Tonight I pray in the name of Jesus. Let there be the hearing of faith. Let there be the working of miracles. May your word come, O oh God, like fire from heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated, everyone. Hallelujah. It's my joy again to be around with us. Um, we're still going to pray tonight, and I trust that God will help us. First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. I begin my reading from verse 12. Let me start. To just encourage our hearts, First John chapter 2, verse 12. I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. 13. I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write to you, young men. Now listen. Because you have overcome the wicked one. 
I write to you little children because you have known the father 14 I have written to you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning I have written to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abided in you and you have overcome the wicked one grant us understanding even by the spirit build our hearts O God in the name of Jesus Christ when scripture is talking to the young it talks about two advantages that they have number one is that they are strong number two is that the word of God abiding in them has given them the ability to overcome a personality that the Bible calls the wicked one please listen when he writes to the fathers he describes that your advantage is your knowledge there is something you have known about God from the beginning when he writes to the young men he says your advantage as young people is that you have strength and then that his word abides in you and on account of that abiding word that you have the power to overcome the wicked it is very important when the Bible is, is teaching us it's important that we focus on the context of what it is saying knowledge for the fathers strength and the grace to fight is the advantage of young people are we together now first John chapter 5 verse 4 Apostle John is still teaching and he's teaching the believer that the life of a believer is not only a life of victory but a life of warfare verse 4 for whatsoever not whosoever is born of God overcome it he's still talking of overcoming listen please young men strength and the grace to fight and he's saying whatsoever is born of God overcomes this system and this is the victory that overcomes there is victory that does not overcome there is victory that calls for celebration but here he's talking about a kind of victory that demonstrates that you are victorious by the experience of your overcoming this system and he says even our faith listen very carefully he didn't say this faith produces that victory he says the faith is the victory are we together now you have to understand this this is for many years I thought he's just talking of faith you will learn something powerful tonight that there is something called the faith that overcomes that if a believer possesses that the proof is that you will be able to rise above this system and the Bible calls that faith it does not say the faith produces victory uh -uh. that faith is victory itself are we together mm. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 16 It starts by saying above all above every spiritual equipping you have been given now remember that in the book of Ephesians he's teaching the believer how to sit a revelation of your position in Christ then he teaches how to walk your walk of faith now he's teaching you how to stand against something he calls the wiles of the enemy and he's saying that above all that you can take a shield a shield I did a little of that during the prayer and fasting I don't know if it was this year or last year a shield of faith and then it says wherewith with that shield you shall have an ability you don't have that ability until that shield is there that when the shield comes you will be able to quench how many all the fiery darts 
of the wicked the same wicked one john is talking about so we know that when it has to do with warfare satan is revealed as a wicked man wickedness that the whole world lied in wickedness that is the character please listen and then the bible says that you can hold the shield of faith and that with that faith you can quench all not some the fiery darts i write to you young men don't forget what we are dealing with because you are strong i write to you young men because you have an ability to fight and overcome are we together now first corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9 we we'll touch on four scriptures and then i'll begin to teach paul is teaching here and he's saying for a great door he's teaching the church in corinth and an effectual is opened unto me so he's talking about open doors are we together now dimensions access a great door and effectual is open unto me he said but there are many adversaries a door of opportunity a door of growth a door of grace but he's saying he's teaching us something here that the moment you see doors opening don't celebrate prepare to fight that a great door is open unto me but that the moment a door begins to be opened he's teaching you that you should not be carried away by that door that is open the moment you see doors opening know that there are many adversaries and so young men get set when you see doors open take up your shield of faith because there is the wicked one are you are you getting what i'm teaching you now yes that for every door that is opened and effectual that means you can see the presence of the evil one to validate whether it was God that opened that door and that you are prepared to fight with this shield of faith please understand I teach you a deep mystery that you will need for your spiritual life a great door and an effectual is open but many are the adversaries but the Bible says you can take hold the shield of faith and you will be able to quench the fiery darts now listen it matters that we understand how we grow in the kingdom it matters listen please that we understand how we transit in the kingdom it matters that we understand how victory is wrought for the saints because for many believers we are aware of promises but we have not been mentored into the dynamics of walking into the experience of the life the power the grace of the kingdom and so while we are inspired by an expected end many times we are ignorant of the things that happen between Egypt and Canaan are you getting what I'm saying now so it is true that we fix our eyes on the end but we are never really taught to understand the many things the vicissitudes that we will face on the way and lack of listen lack of that understanding can do many things to our experience including not allowing us to arrive at the end spiritual maturity is not just the ability to be in church in fact it's not just the ability to read your bible to be equipped remember when he talks about fathers their advantage is knowledge you are fathers because you have an advantage of knowledge so when he talks about fathers he says you have knowledge there is something that you know when he talks about young men he says young men you are about to know something you do not yet know it but in your fight what you need now is the strength and the stamina to fight so that when you become fathers you will also be able to guide the young are you getting what I'm saying now fathers you have this knowledge because you fought 
and that experience taught you something about God that has become an advantage and a security for you. Young men, you are, your advantage is that you are emotion, there is strength. But there are many things you are going to know. And then he says, guard you with strength and stand in faith because a door is open towards you but there are many adversaries and you must understand the spiritual technology by which men fight until they grow to become fathers listen very carefully to what i'm about to teach you it's a very powerful mystery many believers are not trained to understand the things of the spirit and how to navigate the enemy please hear me this life is a combination of victories that appear when we fight a good fight of faith now I believe in the grace message don't get me wrong I believe in all of these dimensions of the kingdom but there is something about destiny that I want us to respect tonight that destiny is a threat to Satan the very the very picture of destiny your fulfilling your destiny is the assurance that Satan's doom is imminent and so when Satan sees a man and a people with a destiny they become the center of his interest now many believers don't know this we have all kinds of wise sayings don't trouble me I don't trouble you and all of that and we have sometimes this false indoctrination that the only way you give Satan the only way Satan comes to you is when you look for his trouble you are joking go and read your Bible well the, there is something the moment you carry that thing calls Satan till you leave the earth please understand what I'm teaching you when there is prophecy upon your head when there is grace upon your life when there is a word upon your mouth when there is an interest upon your life Satan is interested in you and let me tell you there is one thing about Satan he has an undying interest he wants everything God wants and if that thing is you then listen to this message Koinonia is quiet <laughs> The proposition that many believers have that you just know God love God worship God engage principles here and there you know just speak the word here and there and just cut walk into a glorious destiny is a joke I hate to be the bearer of bad news but it's a joke if it is destiny in Christ if it's a life of victory then please understand what I tell you that there is faith that overcomes follow me as I teach I have discovered that Satan's assignment listen carefully Satan's assignment is never to fight your faith I used to think Satan was after our faith I found out that's wrong Satan is not after your faith Satan is after the information upon which your faith was built now please understand what I'm teaching you Satan is not interested in your faith Satan is interested in information words because that is the basis upon which faith is built please understand this <clears throat> There is no basis for faith until it is built on a word or the word as the case may be. Are we together? If I tell Pastor Alpha or Pastor Femi or Kenny or anybody, I say come. I have called them. I have sent a word. They can place their faith upon it now. 
You see that? So what you really attack is not their obedience. What you attack is the information. If I tell Pastor Alpha, come, Pastor Femi, come, and they hear another voice that says, go. Now, that is an attack on information because in either ways, it is going to necessitate action. Please listen to what I'm teaching you. Many believers get to a point in their Christian experience where they have access to spiritual information that many times begins to corrupt the pace of their work with God. There are many believers who the challenge in their life is information dependent. Satan just comes in to plant another information. Please hear what I teach you. We're going to go to Genesis and you see what happened to Adam and Eve. I, I thought Satan was after faith, action. No, he's after information. Hezekiah heard just one information from a prophet and Hezekiah's whole life went down. If prophet Isaiah never reached Hezekiah, he probably would be able to, maybe he would have died still. But just that information, one information. The apostles of the Lamb were walking with Jesus and they had one information, I'm about to die, I'm going and I'm leaving you. And that changed everything. Jesus, where are you going? A dead body had one information and came back to life. Wine was finished. One information was introduced. And the next thing, water was turned to wine. Listen to me. This is a kingdom where we reign. And this is a kingdom where Satan operates. And this is also a kingdom where God operates by the power of spiritual information. In fact, information generally. Whether spiritual, whether intellectual, whether psychological. Our fight, therefore, in this kingdom is not necessarily a fight against spirits alone. It's not necessarily a fight against antichrist systems alone. The greatest warfare of a believer, listen to me, will be the warfare of words. The warfare of information. One information comes into your life or a series of information and it turns an ordinary student to become a doctor, to become an engineer, to become whatever it is, information. One information in a business seminar suddenly turns someone who has no hope of prospering. He receives that information and that information turns his life around. Have you been taught that in this kingdom, the maker and the breaker of men is information? There is what we call IT today. It's called information technology. Information is so powerful that technology was built around it. People have become multi-millionaires because they have mastered the art of disseminating information. They have created platforms around the world that connect people and supply information and they have prospered through it. Information is so powerful that when God is about to come and give Daniel an information, he doesn't just speak from heaven, he sends an angel with it to come. That's how much he places value on information. When Mary is about to receive Jesus, Jesus coming to her like that, she would not receive him. An angel had to come. Before the journey of Jesus started, she supplied an information. And Mary said, be it unto me. Hmm. 
Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any of the beasts of the field which the Lord has made. Verse 2. And he said, notice now, we call this the fall of man, theologically speaking of, you know, Adam and Eve now falling from that height and being banished out of the Eden of God. And remember, the entire story started with words. Satan comes to the woman, to the serpent, and says, what did God say? Please go back to verse 1. I want to find out. All I am after is what information are you standing upon? Because the information is creating an effect in this garden. And that effect is creating is not giving me allowance. So for me to thwart the purposes of God, I want to find out. So I'm on a research. What did God tell you? And the woman said, well, verse 2. God said we may eat. So God gave us access to the fruit of the trees of the garden. Verse 3. But of the fruit, aha, uh -huh, Satan's attention is coming now. He says, this and that and that you shall not eat, neither shall you touch it. And then he said, what is the consequence? That if you touch it, you shall die. So an information tied to life and an information tied to death. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And then Satan does not say, man, leave the garden. Satan does not say, man, I command you to die. In fact, Satan does not say, man, stop having faith. He says, man, give me your attention. Next verse. The serpent said, ye shall not die. Do you know what he's doing? He did not touch their faith. He's redirecting where the faith is based upon now. They still need faith to believe this. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And the only thing he came was to withdraw nicely the information upon which their victory in the garden was predicated upon. And he shifted it and supplied another information. And they absorbed that information. Verse 5. It says, for God knows. For God knows. I write to you fathers, any father including God, that the advantage in fatherhood is knowledge. For God knows that the day you eat thereof, your eyes will be opened. And then you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Verse 6. Now, he said, when the woman saw, notice what the information started doing. The information was like a drug. We are not aware that he touched her. He just supplied an information. The first thing the information changed was perception. The eyes. The eyes started coming under the influence of that information. And then number two, an appetite started coming out that was not there. Now, look at how words are powerful. You will now know why God is called the word of God. The compendium of the thoughts of God. This is how Satan sent man out of Eden. Is it not amazing that he never used a sword? My brothers and my sisters, the greatest battles are not fought with knives. The greatest battles are not fought with blood and arrows and guns. The greatest battles is the energizings that information does to people. And the Bible says here that when she saw that it was pleasant and good for food, the Bible says she partook of it. Ate. That information compelled action. He never touched her, but he made something that had entered her spirit and her mind to compel action. And then the Bible says that she gave unto her husband who was there and he did eat. Next verse. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sued fig trees. The long and short is he banished them out of the garden. This is the first official record in the Bible of man becoming a victim of Satan. This is the first official record of the warfare between man and Satan, and Satan won. 
So it means that we have to go back and study what weapon he used. And he used the weapon of words. Weapons of information. Are we together now? Yes. There is another way of doing ministry that can produce great results. That information comes. I can put something in your pocket and suddenly the power of God will multiply. You were moving in innocence, but an information came. I will tell you something about informations. I just needed to know that the real warfare of a believer is a battle of information. Satan wants your mind because your, your destiny is not just God dependent. It's also dependent on the information that runs you. Your faith cannot be based on nothing. And whatever something it is that is the pillar of your confidence, of your results, that's what Satan wants. Please listen to me. The information upon which your faith is built, that is his concern. Satan is not interested in your faith as it were. He's interested because faith is simply conviction on an information and the corresponding action you take to demonstrate that you are convicted. That's it. So if I tell Tosin, I say, Tosin, go and collect that handkerchief from this gentleman. Now faith can come because I have released a word. Is that true? Yes. That word will stop him from doing what he was doing before and compel him now to act. So when you see him move, you call it faith. But faith would never have been there except that an information came. Now, assuming he's on his way going and I now stop him and give him another word, I say, don't worry, go back. What did I do? I turned his whole life around using information. Listen to what I teach you. There is power in this. Will you open up the gate? Open up the door. Will you open up the gate? for the gates of life to be open. Will you open up the gate? Open up the door. I want to show you why information is power, both in the realm of the spirit and in this realm. I want to show you why words are so powerful. God protects it with his name and calls himself the word of God. God does not call himself um, the hand of God as it were. He names himself after information. If God names himself after information, that information created the heavens and the earth. Something was said and suddenly made bones that were hiding to come out. Something was said that made bones that were dead to come back to life. Something was said that made fishermen to not be interested in fishing again. I can stop whatever you are doing now, not by fighting you. I only need to introduce something to you. I can move your life by information. I can stop your life by information. I can help you to be anointed by information and I can destroy you by information. No wonder the founders of some of the great conglomerates around the world today, their product, the advantage is the vast access they have to information.
Google, Facebook. They are a threat today to national security. And the simple advantage is because they develop a psychological platform that compel the world to grant them access to information to the point that the US government has to call them. There are several cult groups today and everything that is discussed in those cult groups are privy information. Are we together now? Let me share with you the technology of words. I want to show you, that's not the topic for tonight. I want to show you why words are powerful. I want to show you why information is powerful. So that you will understand that every time a word goes before you, it's not just a time to jump. It's a time to begin to prepare. Because Satan is coming after that information. This charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, that you wore a good warfare. I've sent you with our information. I've done my best. Timothy, hold that information and fight until you win. Let me tell you why words are powerful. Second Kings. I mean, not Second Kings. Ezekiel chapter 2. I sense a strong anointing in this place. Look up, please. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand up on thy feet, and I will speak unto you. Verse 2. And the Spirit entered me. Wow. When he spake unto me, and that Spirit, the words just stop at my ear. And the spirit continued. The spirit started making my body to start acting in consonance with what was said. Now listen please. That he wanted me to move from where I was to another place. And he simply sent a word. And when that word got to the gate of my ears, it was not, it, it had finished his work like a tray. Every other thing that entered me was no longer sound, it was spirit. And that when it entered me, like a drug reacting to a patient, have you swallowed a drug before? And then you stand and the contraindications begin to work on you. You start to feel drowsy and you are wondering. Remember, you didn't ask the drug whether you wanted to be drowsy or not. It entered you and started reconfiguring you. I know your action by what you have received. I look at your destiny and I can I can trace your victory or your problem to the presence of information. What did God tell you? Your victory cannot be automatic. So if what did God tell you? In your conversation with him because in Genesis when you read Genesis chapter 2 it says now the Lord came the Hebrew word is the talking spirit the spirit that speaks the spirit that lives by speaking the spirit that changes a man's life by speaking now listen so for every word that is spoken there is a spirit the word spirit there does not just mean the Holy Spirit. It means there is an energizing. Words and information carry energy. They create a climate that compel action. This is where religion and science both agree. That words are powerful. They are shapers of perception. They are initiators of action. Words. I write to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you. Your strength is based on something you have heard and your victory is predicated upon a, a spiritual information supply. There is a medical condition called brain damage. There is also another medical condition called loss of memory. It happens a lot with old people. It's a state where because of whatever biological challenges, you no longer 
have the retention power. You can forget your wife, your husband. And medical people agree that it's a dangerous state for a man to be in. There are people, watch this, who all of a sudden, especially the elderly, after 60, 70 years of living on earth, he could even be a pilot, he could even be a professor. Just two months, something affects the bank of information and the man can no longer walk. His bones were not affected. The information was withdrawn and he stands up and can no longer move. And you ask him and say, what is your name, sir? And he talks like a toddler. The absence of information turned a man to a baby. The technology of words. Words carry presence. Information carries energy. Whether they are spiritual information, whether they are psychological information, whether they are they are um, intellectual information, that every time your the gate of your ears and your eye is open to information, there is more that happens to you than awareness and enlightenment. Ladies and gentlemen, now I want you to pay attention because I'm showing you a secret that is destroying our generation. I show you the reason why men never stay until they win. I show you a reason why very few people are victorious in this life. Do you know why? Because one of the worst things that happened to us on earth is a system that allowed information to go uncoordinated. It's one of the worst discoveries. It is an advantage but what a, it was a galore for Satan when that happened. There are still a few nations today. Now I'm not, I'm not, I'm not speaking political. But there are a few nations today that still have some level from an earth realm. From some level of sanity a bit. And the reason why those nations have is the dictators, the leaders there. Worked with the government to stop information dissemination. Is that true? When you study um, stories of men like Adolf Hitler, who led the campaign wanting to make Germany to speak about dominance, there were chants and cliches that they continued to put. It was on radio, it was everywhere. And all they were doing is indoctrinating the average German to believe he was superior. And it worked. He built an army not by recruiting men, information. Terrorist groups today continue to recruit people, not necessarily by force. They propose information that can make a young man who is on his way becoming a doctor to suddenly turn and say, I want to become part of a group and will be willing to die for it. Whoever told you information is cheap. Whoever told you information is simple. Where God names himself the word of God. The information of God. So every time words come to you. Here's the technology. When a word is spoken or you come in contact with words or information the first thing that happens to you is your imagination is activated imaginations cannot be activated until there are words this is why words are dangerous words are the only instruments that have the power to activate imagery from where we get imaginations Everybody look up. Imagine a yellow orange. Yellow orange. Big yellow orange. Now imagine that someone is cutting that orange with a knife. Are you seeing how whether you like it or not, you are thinking what I'm saying. You are not just hearing it. I'm forcing your mind to move a direction by using the power of information. Now imagine a mother carrying a little baby. Imagine the baby trying to cry. 
are, are you seeing how helpless your mind is? Provided the only way you can stop that imagination is to stop the information from reaching you. But once it is there, it has an ability that not even you can control again. Once it enters, it's like a drug. It starts to become an artist. It paints images about God, about life, about Satan. A little baby never believed that life can be hard till an information came. He heard the father or the mother say, Kai, this life self, this life self, and an image began to be created. And that image, listen, it is dangerous because the moment an image is built, your emotions are connected to the image. The moment your emotions are connected to images, creation begins immediately. This is how things manifest. Please, I want you to listen. You will thank me for what you are learning today. When the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, it knows what it's saying. That means control the information that enters into your spirit man because out of it, that information is not just words. That information is not just speakings. That information is a potential for creation that can make or mar you. What Elijah is playing now is not just music. What he's playing now, they are words. They are spiritual information operating at different frequencies and because your tripartite nature was designed to understand this your ears may not know what he's saying but your spirit man knows that is the reason why they can use music to calm people down that is why when music was played a demon left Saul the demon had something that Saul did not hear the ear of Saul was not necessary. Just allow the string enter. When it gets to the realm of the spirit, it will change back to words and the spirit will know what is being said. Listen to me. Nations today have gone to war simply because of information. Whole territories have been annihilated because of information. There are people today in hellfire because of information who has believed our reports to that man the arm of the Lord has been made revealed words carry spirits words carry energy and this is not some science nonsense I am telling you you literally can program your climate in less than a minute by the entrance. He said the entrance of your word give it light and understanding. That means show a confused man scattered in destiny. Just introduce the word of God to that person. And that's it. Your life will begin to reflect the information that you have. I'm saying this because, listen to me, our generation is very careless over our minds. Our generation is very careless over the power of words. In ministry, in life, people don't seem to have regard for words. Words are powerful. Words produce effects. Words can make. Words can destroy. Words can heal. Words can cause pain. Words are powerful. And if you understand this, words create imaginations and they connect us to those imaginations. When Satan wants a cause to remain in your family, he does not say cause remain. He uses words, the word of a priest, the word of an elder, words that have come from father to grandfather. Now you believe those words and when you believe those words, they create images. You are emotionally connected to those images and you are loyal to what you believe. That is the strength of the altar. 
the altar sits on your emotional connection to those words the day you stop believing those words you are ready for the power of God to smash that thing that's why when the Holy Ghost comes he now tells you are you not aware that there is another information Esther listen her man came and requested the king to approve an information and an information was stamped already and the death sentence of the people were waiting they were going about every day they did not know that they had finished killing them by information even when her man died they were still in trouble because the real enemy was not her man the real enemy was the information Esther knew that the death of her man had not yet solved that problem information and so Esther went to the king and said do you know what you have to write another information that can give an upper hand to preserve my people it was at that Esther chapter 6 that the story ends with honor and glory information words that's what they call a fool. many of you do it People have collapsed because of April Fool. Others have died and no opportunity to tell them I'm joking again. Now watch this. You go to an ATM to withdraw money. Remember the ATM does not speak English. You are just using your eyes. Withdraw for me 5,000 and the ATM says cash unavailable. Immediately that report depresses you. You stand there. A machine did not flog you. A machine did not speak your language. It only created an energy. Remember, you are smiling. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Bouncing to the ATM. And suddenly, because you punch and it said cash unavailable, you start thinking, this is how my life is. It did not ask you to think that way. While you are laughing, take seriously what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Satan waits until the information has been connected to your imagery then he comes he will create a system around it sit upon it and your doom becomes almost imminent this is the victory that overcomes what victory the labor in the spirit to protect the information it is real warfare and it produces real victory are you hearing what I'm saying now? There are, there are many of us here that are parents. Why do we prefer, now please, I, I, this is respectful with all my heart, but why will a parent prefer to carry a child to a mission school than an ordinary public school? It may not necessarily just be the standard. The parent wants to keep the child within a sociological sphere that regulates the quality of the information that is in the mind of the child. And to do that because it's not cheap, you will pay for it. That's the reason why a school where there can be people, there's no gate in and out. Anybody can lean on this class and suggest you can pay next to nothing. But there are people who pay millions per term on a child. And you are wondering, it is not only the knowledge they are paying for, they are paying for the atmosphere. Are we together now? When you go to Transcorp, or you go to any of these modern day hotels, you buy a cup of coffee and you can pay 5,000. Stroll 30 meters, 10 meters from that place, you will get the same coffee, hello, the same hot water, the same everything for less than 500 naira. So what did you really pay for? Because your access to that place can give you an information. You can be seated in a lounge when two millionaire businessmen are discussing and you will hear something that can be an advantage. You can be there when politicians are talking. So you are not only paying for tea, you are paying for the energy that you are receiving there. Why does Satan fight your coming to Koinonia? Did you hear the wonderful testimony of that, my dear brother? Why does Satan fight tooth and nail? He knows that it is not only the speakings of a man. That more than what you are hearing, there is a spirit. Please hear what I'm saying. Somebody testified that he got an alert. What did the alert do to him? 
noticed he had not verified whether the alert would be reversed. As soon as he saw it, he just started becoming glad. Watch this. A student stands in front of the board. He's coming with his friend to check his result. Glory be to God. I'm happy. We'll all be graduates. And he stands in front of the board. And in two minutes, he sees an information. Three carryovers. And that person is there. And for the next one week, he cannot become himself again because an information came. Imagine that while he's standing there, somebody just comes and says, sorry, it's a mistake. It was not your number. Watch. This. Immediately he will change back. Now watch this. Look at how you are moving at the frequency of information. Like people who check admission list and don't see their names and they go back depressed and then they see a text congratulations say for what say you got admission say no you are checking your first name check your son name and you quickly check and that's your name immediately you start to dance the information did not tell you to dance it created an energy that supplied action are you getting what i'm saying now that means if words create imaginations that connect us emotionally to it, then we must guard the words and the information that comes to us. Another thing with words is that they compel us to think and act in honor of the persuasions obtained. To think and act in honor of the persuasions. You receive an information that your loved one has gone to be with the Lord. That information does something to you. That's why you cry. That information does something to you. That's why you are gloomy and agitated. That information does something to you. The same way you receive an information, somebody just blessed you with a house. That information does something to you. Now listen to me. Listen to me. When you become a master at creating your own spiritual, emotional, and sociological climate, you have become a master indeed. Do you know why I'm saying that? Because for every open door you read, there are many adversaries. And guess how the adversaries act? They operate through words through words you will be promoted to a company as soon as you get there you'll be happy until you hear that there is tribalism in this company the moment you hear it it begins to affect you a believer has the responsibility please hear me in honor of your destiny in honor of the purposes of God you have a responsibility under God to set a guard, not just over your mouth, but over your mind to control the information. Unfortunately, our world today is full of all kinds of information. People have entered divination not knowing because in a bid to search for truth, they stumbled across Greek and Hebrew words who went to Latin words, who went to ancient words, who went to magical chants. And before you know it, they found themselves in all kinds of things. I learned this about my life and I learned this from uncommon mentors and when I learned this it, I made it a personal responsibility that my life I was going to guard with jealousy because the information that you are connected to ignites creation and sooner or later you will begin to see those information notice I am a doctor this is a patient he's feeling a little bit of pain in his side and then he comes to me and I run a test and I tell him sir you have cancer and based on this cancer I'm not saying doctors are wrong it is at stage four and usually statistics we built a statistics around this information that at this stage of cancer you have between six months to one year to live any other encouragement you give that man is a waste of time the information has entered let me tell you what will begin to happen my child is only nine years 
what am I going to do with my nine year old child and then the spirit of fear rides upon that information and comes I hope you know that there are cases that don't reach nine months fear is coming the next thing the spirit of suicide comes what good is living while all of this is happening watch this those possibilities will now be making all of these foundational things look strong and powerful as though they veto you and walk they depend on your partnership your reception of words now watch this he said young men the word of God abides in you that means when that kind of report comes there should be if you are a believer there should be war within your spirit if there is no war it's a sign that you are not holding the shield of faith and you are not an overcomer because it is expected that it should enter and meet another information and listen when the word went to hell there was war in hell are we together now Satan mimicking attempting to be the light bearer the word and then the word himself the logos of God there was war in hell and he triumphed over them and came out as the firstborn of the begotten the war happened in the realm of the spirit but the result was seen in the physical realm the war always happens in the realm of the spirit the death happens in the realm of the spirit the defeat happens in the realm of the spirit and all we see is the physical manifestation Satan and Jesus did not come to the earth and then they came out and said wow now we no 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 the battle was won there the keys were collected and he came out victorious and said all hail all power immediately he resurrected he spoke straight up there is something you need disciples come together in three days you had something that changed your mind little children come feed my lamb tarry in Jerusalem the Holy Ghost is coming information that's what he left them with when the angels came they said why look up you know to the sky this same Jesus you have seen he will return that became the basis of salvation the death the burial the resurrection of Christ Paul created a theology out of that information that is where we stand today he calls it the power of God unto salvation please listen to what I tell you our children watch cartoons and people get initiated why because of information notice that when these children here they start chanting what they are saying even if it's part of what they are saying whether or not they understand it and they become emotionally connected to it and it begins to affect them I write to you young men because you are strong fathers you know this you are equipped in knowledge but I write to you young men because you are strong I write to you young men because the Word of God is abiding in you and because of that abiding word Satan is going to come and when he comes fight what fight the fight of allowing the Word of God gain superiority he said let God be true and let every man be a liar this is the warfare of the believer I got a report from home in the name of Jesus let the word of God well up within me I decree and declare there is no death in my family there is no going down there is only rising up the hand of God is upon me you are fighting the warfare you are using that faith that the Bible calls is the victory I give you a guarantee there is one thing Satan does not have an indefinite power to survive it is the keeper of Israel that does not sleep nor slumber Satan can be weary But there are many weak believers we sit down and allow the devil shred our lives into pieces we sit down and allow the devil to take advantage do you know there are people right now who are like if you can imagine in the realm of the spirit imagine chains that are a result of several presents that came because of words you will fail you will die your life will not rise you are good for nothing and you sit down and it leads to depression 
the birth of anything valuable is painful it will require you knowing how to fight satan i'm saying this because this thing is killing people all over the earth internet people go online and type something go online and just put something bam, and they hear an information that depresses their life forever oh the job you did with that class there is a statistics like this that out of the so 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 million of graduates only three in ten years see let me tell you the truth and I submit to you many information on this earth are useless as far as your life is concerned as far as your victory is concerned you have an assignment to lean and help the spirit of truth to guide you into the truth that are necessary for your life if you expose yourself to just any and every kind of information you will lose the anointing you will lose relevance you will lose power your strength is in your protecting that information. You must guard yourself. Is God speaking to us? This gentleman sings. I can tell him one word. Your song is beautiful. It will take you around the earth. He can carry that information and be working with it until he meets a manager and the manager looks at him and says what tribe are you you are not this tribe mr man i don't want to lie to you i'm sorry another information creates presence listen we are going to pray tonight and many of you do not know that you are in the you are in the midst of different demonic energies that have come from words and because you are connected to these various things, they make good things look evil. It is this energy that will make good people look like devils. Even if somebody looks at you and says, nice hair, you say, nice hair for what? You are reacting to an energy. There are information that has come to you that nothing good will come out of your life. So it corrupts your perception. When God says, I want to lift you, like Mephibosheth, you say, am I a dog? God, go and lift others tonight we have come to tear these things it's why people don't prosper let me tell you it doesn't matter what kind of business you do the real business is the business of information is the reason why no great businessman will teach anything valuable everywhere they will call you and culture you and make sure you are ready to receive what they are telling you there was something Peter, James, and John saw and knew that the rest did not know. That was why they became the pillars. There are things God has shown me in my life about himself. There are things God has revealed to me. They become the objects of my protection because they are the pillars of my success. And if anything happens to them, then it will shred my life into pieces and I will continue to labor to protect them. Let me tell you this, your atmosphere is waiting for you to stand in faith and tear down that atmosphere. Otherwise, I don't care what kind of deliverance you do, you will get up and fall down. Your life will never change that atmosphere. I can stand in front of this guy and pick the signals of depression. I can stand in, not word of knowledge, I can pick the signals of discouragement. Why? Because I am also a spirit being and this guy has been programmed by an atmosphere. Let me tell you this. Human beings are simply walking atmospheres, carrying their possibilities around. And you have an assignment under God to fight this warfare of preserving your atmosphere, the insistence. It's called the faith that brings victory. You must be careful what you say to yourself. 
you must be careful what you say to others you must be careful what you hear from yourself you must be careful what you hear about others it is not the information it is the effect on your life on your destiny it is the effect um, a few days ago, I, I was watching an interview between some of the billionaires in the world, and I was shocked at the, they are so cultured. Words are expensive to them. You see the way they speak. And then I was watching CNN. I don't know when was it. I was just watching a, 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 an impeachment probe that, that is going on and so on and so on. And I mean, you, you could see the way those guys were meticulously words. Just one word, not said correctly, can be the... And I said, ah, God, grant me the grace to master words. If my destiny is word dependent, then do something to my life. This is more than the ability to speak English. This is the ability to make sure that your communications are cultured, seasoned with salt. Number two, to ensure that you have an atmosphere that is a shield. That faith, immune by the word of God. When death comes, it finds an information. When discouragement comes, it finds an information. You are enveloped in it. Just like that. The shield. Please hear me. The days that are coming will require this understanding. The days that are coming, you will need to be the prophet of your own destiny. The days that are coming, you will need to set a guard over your mind. Your prosperity depends on it. Your lifting depends on it. Those of us in ministry, listen twice. Let me tell you, the days that are coming, you must master the art of ensuring that your spiritual climate, that your intellectual climate, that your emotional climate is seasoned with the word of God. It's an assignment you must do because a lot depends on it. Let me show you one scripture and then we'll find a place to pray. Second Kings chapter 7. Please pray in the spirit in one minute. Second Kings chapter 7. Second Kings chapter 7. Second Kings chapter 7. Hallelujah. Please look up. Watch this. Then Elisha said, this is the prophet, hear ye the word. He, he wants to change farming now. I want to show you the technology. Until now, Samaria is under siege to the point that women are eating their children. Do you think those women started eating their children like that? Somebody must have said something that made women to see their children as food because children are not food. Tomorrow about this time, information, everybody say words. Shall a measure of flying flour be, be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria? Next verse, verse 2. And then this other Lord said a lot of things. Simply because he did not fight the prophet. He fought the information that came from God. And there was a consequence. He said, behold, thou shalt see it with your eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. Next verse. Now, watch how God brings his word to pass. Look up, please. We're about to pray. There were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate. And they said, the spirit of prophecy made them to start saying to one another, are you seeing how this thing works? They were not talking to themselves before, but an anointing came. As soon as that anointing came, information started coming. Why they said to one another, why sit we here till we die? Was that the first time they were sitting there? They had been there. But see, every word is sponsored by spirits. Listen to what I tell you. When they were prophesying, I hope you know these four lepers did not hear it. 
they did not hear the prophecy but the spirit that went with that prophecy started searching for men and they were sitting they didn't even know a spirit had come upon them the next thing the urge to talk and they said why should we sit here and die and as soon as they started contemplating go back to go to verse 4 if we say we will enter the city then famine is in this city and we shall die there and if we sit here we will die also please talk to me what has this got to do with four lepers sitting down it is not about leprosy it is creation about to happen but creation cannot happen until spiritual information come even for lepers even if you cannot walk you can hear It says, now, therefore, come. They are talking to one another. Let us fall onto the host of the Syrians. If we save us alive, we shall die. If they kill us, we shall but die. Look at this. These are people sitting at the gate, running away from hunger. And in minutes, courage comes upon them. And they make up their mind, let's just go and give ourselves to our enemy. If we die information now watch this verse 5 and they rose up what time at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians and when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria behold there was no man there what happened next verse hallelujah Mako Sibra Katushiata for the Lord made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise. He did something to their perception. They got an information. I'm showing you how they ran away. They got an information and then even a great noise and they said the same way the leper said to one another. This guy said to one another, lo, the king of Israel had hired against us. Are you seeing what perception does? It gives you ideas that are not there. They, there was no business. The kings themselves were afraid. But here is an information making a weak man look strong. The king had hired against us the kings of the Hittites, the Egyptians, and so on and so forth to come upon us. Wherefore, they arose and fled also in the twilight and left their tents, their horses, their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. Eight. And when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink. And they carried silver, gold, raiment, and went and hid it, and came again, and entered into another tent, and carried all of this, verse 9, to tell you it was the Spirit of God. They now said, the same Spirit now made them to pass another information. It would have stopped at them stealing to run away, but the goal would not be achieved. The goal was the salvation of Samaria, not the healing of four lepers. So the Spirit now came, and still made them to say to one another again, we do not well. Same spirit. Can you imagine that? One moment they are stealing and running away and happy. Next moment they are convicted and say we do not do well. This is the day of good tidings and we hold our peace. If we tarry till morning, what if some mischief come upon us? Now therefore come, let us go to the king's house and tell him this good report. That king, we came and found food here. Four lepers were used to save a nation through the power of words. I'm showing you the technology. If one of those lepers, just one, said I'm not going, the rest would have been discouraged. It was the spirit of God that made all of them to unanimously agree. Man of God, let me show you where the next level of your ministry is. It's not just in a man. It is in an information. There is something you can hear. There is something you have heard. 
there is something you are hearing that is shaping your life literally we are products of the information that we have heard there is something koinonia has heard that has been the building block upon which the faith of god rests there is something our families have heard that has authorized darkness to defeat us tonight in prayer is a warfare of words to stand to say lord a generation depends on the quality of not only my spiritual enlightenment but the warfare my children are depending on the quality listen let me tell you this the bible says i think it's mark 4 or so did i write it here mark chapter 4 and verse 24 let me show you god's standard it says take heed what ye hear with what measure ye meet it shall be measured to you that means hearing is also sowing when you hear it's like a farmer putting seeds and he said that if you hear you are drawing more of that that means you keep attracting more things to your life are you seeing why more tragedies continue to come to people because their minds continue to create the climate for it this is where it comes from it shall be measured to you and unto you that here shall more be given more of what you hear more of what you hear if you hear the word of god you hear things that build you more of it will come you hear about the anointing it will bring the anointing more of it will come you hear about that's why we must be careful now i minister deliverance and all of that but i have a little problem with talking about satan and talking about demons every day and forever it is dangerous because more than the information you are trying to pass you are shaping the minds of the people to the point that they will never ever see victory again when isaiah the year that king uzziah died isaiah told us what he saw he said i saw the lord i saw the lord son of man what seest thou you must choose what you hear Parus you must choose what you see words is a battle of destiny please understand what i'm telling you it's a battle of destiny words are like drugs the only thing is that they don't enter through your mouth once they enter your spirit they can keep you poor they can keep you less anointed but when you embrace the engrafted word it is able to make you this is the place of encounter. This is the place of surrender. To me, what you want. This is the place. Where my flesh gives way Do to me what you want This is the place Where my life is changed Do to me what you want The disciples went into hiding Because of something they heard As soon as Jesus resurrected He told Mary Magdalene he said run go and tell them this new information Jesus is alive he's risen the tomb is empty as soon as she went to tell them that information gave them energy listen you are dying today physically because of something that entered your ears something else must enter you tonight as the spirit something else I am able I am well able I am well able spies were sent ten of them came with something called an evil report the bible did not call it an honest report it called it an evil it was their perception they brought and the bible says i don't care if it's not the word of god it's an evil report and joshua and caleb said let's go up at once he said we are well able they were the only two that entered the promised land Listen, 
Listen, you must make it a project to frustrate Satan in your life. You must make it a project to disallow. He is at the mercy of your understanding this truth. I write to you fathers because you have known. I write to you sons because although you do not know, you have strength. You can fight and experience can come out of your battle. That when you now become fathers, you can mentor other sons. I write to you fathers, young men, because the word abides in you. So when words come, it's a battle of words and you fight in the spirit to preserve those words. Listen, it said you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes. But what they received made them to speak. On the day of Pentecost, fire came on their head, but the reaction was speaking. They began to speak. From that speaking, 3,000 were saved. From that speaking, the church began to advance. Please hear me. Your destiny is bigger than your today. Man of God, this level of ministry is only the starting point. And let me tell you this. If you can hold on to that victory, the Bible calls the fight to protect God's information the victory that overcomes. The victory that overcomes. The victory that overcomes. The victory that overcomes. Overcomes. Lift your voice and begin to blast in the spirit. Parusha barakatu. Ebreketeke paruta shalakata. The victory that overcomes. The victory that overcomes. In the name of Jesus. The victory that overcomes. Even our faith. The victory that overcomes. Even our faith, the victory that overcomes. Even our faith, the victory that overcomes. In the name of Jesus, pray. Be a speaking spirit tonight. Pray. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. Hear me. Hear me. It was through the power of prayer, a physical climate changed from a dry season to a rainy season. Any climate can change when we pray. Elijah prayed dry season to become rainy season. You are going to pray that every atmosphere and every climate that ministers death, that ministers discouragement, that in the name of Jesus, both the information and the atmosphere live my life. Speak to it. Speak to your childhood. Speak to your limitations. I come in the name of the Lord, the captain of the armies of heaven.
understand. We are praying. First Corinthians 14, verse 10. Read with me. One to read. There are, as it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. That means no voice at all is just a social voice. No voice at all is just a technology voice. No, every voice is programming your destiny. Whether it is the voice of a mentor, the voice of the word of God, the voice of culture, the voice of your childhood, the voice of your family, you are going to pray. The Bible says bringing down every stronghold and every thought to the obedience of Christ. Lift your voice and tear down words and information. says while men slept the enemy came and sowed seeds and went his way but the Bible says every tree that has not been planted by my father in the realm of your spirit and in the realm of your mind you are going to uproot and tear down by faith lift your voice and declare I uproot every speaking I uproot Every foundation, I uproot. Every perception, I uproot. Every communication that is not consistent with the character. Every communication that is not consistent with my goal, with my destiny, with my dreams. I come against it in the name of Jesus. Is someone praying tonight? Shabbat <laughs> shalom. 
Hallelujah. Please look up. We are still praying. It's a strong anointing here. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. But we need to know how we resist the devil in this kingdom. Matthew chapter 4, verse 10. Please give it to us quickly. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 10. Resist the devil. Matthew, help us media. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 10. This is how Jesus rebuked and resisted the devil. Then said Jesus to him, Get thee then, Satan, for it is written. That is the basis. It is written. Not I think, not I wish, it is written. The victory that overcomes is a victory that is written. Written. The logos. Get thee tense poverty, for it is written. Get thee tense limitation, for it is written. Lift your voice and declare, Satan away from my destiny, away from my life. It is written. And speak scripture. It is written. Hallelujah. Prophet Joel. Prophet Joel taught us a very deep mystery. In chapter 3, please give it to us. We are praying. 
chapter 3 and verse 10, Joel. Joel 3 and verse 10. Beat your plowshares into swords. In other words, it's time for the fight of faith. And your pruning forks into spares. This is not just a time for harvest. It's a time for warfare. And then it says, in that warfare, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You are about to say so now. This is strategy. Everything the Bible says you are, everything the word of God says you are, you are about to say it now. Lift your voice and begin to prophesy. I am strong. In the name of Jesus, I am blessed. If someone pray, I am anointed. My business is flourishing, pray. The ministry is flourishing by the spirit. My home is flourishing by the power of the Holy Ghost. My finances is flourishing by the spirit of the Christ. I go from glory to glory. I go from grace to grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. And listen to me. You are going to declare. The Lord spoke to us that this is our year of extraordinary fruitfulness. You are going to pray and prophesy. It must be as he said. It must be as he said. Over every area of my life. Lift your voice now and begin. It must be as he said.
Job chapter 5, verse 19. Job chapter 5, verse 19. We'll read 19 and 20. Job chapter 5. Job chapter 5. Are we there? He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven shall no evil touch you. Verse 20. In famine. This is the first kind of trouble that comes upon men in the earth. Famine. He shall redeem thee from death. In war. He shall redeem thee from the power of the sword. 21. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field. Listen, this is a mystery that one day God will grant me the grace to teach in this place. The word league is covenant. That you will be in, in a covenant with the stones of the field. And the beast of the field shall be at peace with you. Listen, he said in six troubles, yes, seven, he shall deliver you. You are about to pray these prayers. In famine, in war, the speakings and the tongues of men, Lord, arise by the Spirit. And let my life see your salvation. Let my life see your salvation. Lift your voice and pray. Are you praying? Arusha la Rakata Praise the Lord. Just two or three more prayer points and we are done for the night. Listen to me. You are going to cry to God and ask the Holy Spirit to be the administrator of your atmosphere. Listen. It's a powerful prayer. He is called the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts. The protector of your atmosphere that your mind will always remain at the presence Samuel had the voice of God because he was lying down close to the ark 
you are going to pray spirit of the lord you were sent to guide me into all truth guide me into the truth formation that would build faith in me for the days that come lift your voice and begin to pray. lift your voice and pray. lift your voice and pray the wisdom of god spirit of the living god guide me to all truth take away the unnecessary for my life Lead me to information. Lead me to scripture. Lead me to revelation. Lead me to understanding. That build my life. That build my destiny. Koinonia, is this your prayer? Is this your prayer tonight? Is this your prayer tonight? Guide me to all truth. Truth for my destiny. Truth for my finance. Truth for my life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, Declare ye that ye might test be justified. That means your bailout, your vindication in the realm of the spirit is predicated upon your declaring. Declaring what? What is written? Listen. The word of God that is allocated for every area of your life to produce victory. You are not going to spare. You will speak. Listen. Listen. I told you that words carry energy. They carry presence. They create imagery. They connect your emotions to those images. And then they make for creation. This is the technology of information. You are going to pray over anything in your life that must change in this season. That must change. You are going to enforce the word of God with power and grace. I'd like you to lift your, your voice. Mention the area that must change. Place a demand. Don't let the devil speak things to your ears. Is it your finances? Is it your family? Is it your spiritual life? Listen to me. You can create a new effect. You can create a new atmosphere. You can create a new image. You can win. The word of God abides in you. Open your mouth and declare, declare, declare. In the glory and the power, I see miracles, signs and wonders. In the glory and the power, I see I'm a sign and wonder.
about life my perception about God my perception about my circumstances my perception about Satan do a miracle to my sight lift your voice and pray do a miracle change my perception every image every emotional connection to every image that is birthing pain, that is birthing impossibilities, that is allowing darkness to reign over my life, change my perception. Koinonia, pray a miracle of the seen eyes. Change my perception. The Bible says, for we know that all things work together for good to them who love God and who are the called according to his purpose. Lift your voice and pray. Change my perception. Change my financial perception. My spiritual perception. My career perception. My sociological perception. My emotional perception. Let my perceptions be lined up to and with the world. Let my perceptions be lined up to and with the world. Change my perception in the name of Jesus. Change my perception. My perception of ministry. My perception of life. My perception of my family. My perception of increase. My perception of your purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's have the last prayer point for tonight. Listen. The victory of the believer is in staying and hearing and seeing the word of God. But we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror we are changed into the same image not another. You will become the reality of the information that enters your life. You will become weakness when you hear weakness. You will become weakness when you hear weakness. You will become strength when you hear strength. Listen to me. You will become powerful when you hear power. You will become full of faith when you hear faith. You will become a man of speed when you hear words of speed. You will become revived when you hear words of revival. You will become a man of fire when you hear words of fire. Listen, your thinking makes your belief system and it translates into who you are. You have an assignment 
to from today and forever protect yourself protect yourself protect yourself from the influence the arsenals of culture the arsenals of satan the arsenals of past your past the arsenals of your weakness career whatever it is make up your mind that you sustain the stamina to stay on that which is written for the bible says listen to me that heaven and earth will pass away but this word abides forever the bible says he upholds all things not by ideas by the word of his power so no matter what you are going through in your life you are not defeated if what is written is still in your mouth joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 i'm rounding up this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night consistently that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein then and only then shall thou make your way prosperous and thou shall have good success last prayer lord jesus magnify your word and the voice of the holy spirit above every other voice and influence in my life lift your voice and pray magnify magnify if someone pray magnify your word above my circumstances magnify your word above my limitations magnify your word above ministry magnify your word if someone pray lord i want to see your word exalted be lifted high, be lifted high, oh Lord, be lifted high, for you are holy, class of degree you finish with. take weak men and set them as kings and princes. It is within the power of God to prosper a man. Please listen to what I tell you. It is within the power of God to keep a man. 
it is within the power of God to bring deliverance and to bring salvation it is within the power of God to give you a new name that the mouth of the Lord himself will call lifted exalted that when you stand through life anything that is not the word of God you have an assignment to fight that fight it's not a weak fight it's a great fight until that which is written becomes your experience until everything that you see is Jesus until everything that you see is his grace his life his power his wisdom until everything you see is that what you saw in your dreams and your vision now becomes your experience you continue to set your gaze on Jesus until you see that anointed version of you that you saw in your dream no matter what you see in your life don't let men clap you to your grave if it has not become what you saw keep pressing Lord I thank you but I keep seeing we are able to go out and take the country to possess the land from Jordan to the sea though the giants may be on our way to hinder God will surely give us victory we are the generation that is well able regardless of your background you are well able it may not look like it until the word of God gains ascendance your assignment is to believe his report and to stay there apostle but you do not understand I didn't get admission apostle as I am right now I don't even know where the next meal will come from apostle I prayed and fasted for the anointing for things to move in my life it doesn't matter what it is my brothers hear me my sisters hear me you are only victorious when you stand on God's side stand continue to exalt his word lift it above once he stands above you will see what that word will do it will become not only an anchor it will become a cover it will become the basis for your victory hear me even the hand of God wrote twice that means whatever was written can be rewritten did you hear what I said the hand of God wrote once and wrote again for Moses Isaiah go back to Hezekiah tell him I have changed my mind Hezekiah there is no death for you again please pay the price to know God pay the price to know God Hezekiah you will continue to be king I have shifted the song to prove to you that I have rewritten Esther meets the king and say write again oh king it was her man that deceived you to write you wrote death it is within your power to write life again and the king said bring me the paper and he wrote and stamped it hear me no matter what has been written over your life I stand by the word of God listen to me in this kingdom please hear me there is a heavy anointing on me I want to pray for you listen it says my heart is indicting a good matter yea I speak of excellent things it says my tongue is the pen of a ready writer I want to write something in your life by the Spirit it is true that what was written can be rewritten mm. please you don't have to kneel you don't have to kneel please stand it is true that the ordinances and the appointments of death the appointments of failure it is true that the expectations of wicked people waiting believing that your family will not amount to anything that your life will go down 
tonight I stand by the Spirit indicting a good matter. He said, yeah, I speak of excellent things. And he says, my tongue is a pen of a ready writer. I stand by the God of heaven who calls men by his grace. I declare whatever was written that is an appointment unto death, I change it and I speak life to you now. Hear me, if Esther did not come to Mordecai, it was not only, if Esther did not come to the king, it was not only her man. Hear me, look at me, let me teach you a mystery. If her man died and Israel died, God lost. The verdict that was in the presence of the king was not just for her man it was also for Israel and Esther came and said king write again the verdict that plagues families and plagues individuals hear me it is not only for your grandfather alone it affects everybody it is not only for Nigerians alone but we are standing like midwives like Esther to say king right again in the name of Jesus every appointment unto derision unto death unto causes unto woes I stand as one who stands by the election of grace and I declare that ordinance is changed over your life Please help them. That ordinance is changed over your life. Hear me. It was unfortunate for Herod. Herod spoke against Peter. And he was speaking against the gospel. But there were saints who were praying. There was nobody to advocate for Herod. Herod fell from his throne, died immediately, and worms came out of his body. They are taken for a prey, and none say it, restore. Listen, restoration is advocated for through the power of prophecy. I decree that anything that has become a programming over your life and destiny to sabotage the purposes of God over your life. I stand by the power of words and in the name of Jesus, we create a new outcome for you. That you believe that God is faithful and that God is able the thousands of promises that are scattered in this Bible God cannot be joking with you hallelujah absolute faith listen we have ended up complicating Christianity but do you know I, I noticed that most of the people that shook their generation most of them were not even educated people they took the Bible. Smith Wigglesworth, he was a cobbler. His wife was even the woman of God. And he just found in his Bible, John 14 verse 12. Hallelujah. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, if thou, let's read it. John 14. Absolute faith. I found out that what most believers have is hope, not faith. Many believers hope in God. They don't have faith in God. They just hope that one day in the sweet by and by. 
verse 12 john 14 verse 12 verily verily i say unto you he that believeth on me who is speaking here this is jesus christ the works that i do he shall also do and greater works say greater works and greater works shall he do this is jesus christ talking here not an angel if he sent a prophet would have said oh the prophet didn't hear well are you listening to me jesus himself said this verily verily i say unto you he that believes and smith wigglesworth found this and said lord are you serious about this that an uneducated person like me if i can believe if i can believe and god said yes Catherine Kuhlman found this. Amphi McPherson found this. Generals of old found this. Verily, verily. He that believes, not he that is born again, not he that is praying in tongues, he that believes, absolute trust. The works that I do, the works that I do, he shall also do. He said, and greater works. Greater works. Many people have tried to give every kind of carnal interpretation. Brother, greater means greater. You went to school. Greater means greater. Greater works. That means if you are not seeing greater works, what is the diagnosis? You do not believe. Now, let me tell you something. When it comes to spiritual growth, you have to apply a lot of humility because the word of God has a way of flogging you and embarrassing you. When I was studying this scripture, I said, Lord, does that mean I don't believe in you? God says, simple, to the degree to which you are seeing my works. And I knew I had to accept it. Because brothers and sisters, I have seen a mystery in our world that is not everything that is impossible for everybody. There are some people, some things are possible for. Are you listening to me? There are some people standing and praying. Oh Lord, bring a boat. And then we see others get on that water and begin to move. The fact that there is one person doing what you are not doing, it kills the excuse. That is God that is responsible. Are you listening to me? He that believes in me. The works. I remember one of the first times I read this scripture. I was studying Pastor Chris's message. And Kenyon on faith. We were going to prepare for crusade. Never had that experience. We didn't know what to expect. But we took this word and said Lord this is true. How many of you truly believe in God? How many of you believe in God? Let me tell you something. Ejimi did something that touched me. I remember during his mother's um, burial. He just came out and laughed. And said. Those who didn't even affect them. They just sat down and were looking. And he said God loaned them the mother for a number of years. And he was so happy. And they kept saying god is faithful and i move forward there are listen there are many of you who have been sitting grumbling shouting at god saying god you are not true do you know you are one over how many people who are saying god is faithful if you say god is not faithful there are angels whose voices are louder than your own they, it will overshadow your own belief in an instant one word holy Are you listening to me do you believe god's word many of you have been reading your bible let me tell you something brothers and sisters there are many pastors there are many ministries who only open the bible because they are looking for messages to preach to people they don't believe it's easy to stand and wear suit and make noise on sunday or on wednesday or on friday or whatever the meeting days are there are many leaders who truly do not believe the word of God. Tonight I'm asking you, do you believe the word of God? 
do you believe that Jesus Christ and all the promises that he has put in the word for you can you take it with childlike simplicity and say Lord I believe do you believe Jeremiah 29 verse 11 that says the thoughts I think towards you there are many of you from the time you got to final year your fear is a direct sign that you don't believe God whatever I fear in my life the faith and the revelation of God's word has not entered there because perfect love casts out fear so if you are afraid of the future let me assure you that the revelation of God's word that secures your future has not entered you yet are you listening to me absolute trust father Abraham and the generals of old these guys believed God and there was a performance and we began to see the fruit and the manifestation of that faith you came to ABU and you believed God that you will be a success then your first result 1.5 7 carryovers hey, hey God you said this boy you just said Lord I believe you you just said Lord I believe you you just said no matter what Lord your word is true and I know that this is not over hallelujah your uncle promised you that it's going to be blessing you suddenly your uncle said I've changed my mind he said ah but uncle he said the only constant thing in life is change I have changed my mind and suddenly fear grips you I tell you friends fear is an indication that the word of God has not crystallized in that area in your life for when the word of God truly comes it drives out fear say I refuse to fear there are so many believers living in the world we confess God's word we believe God's word in quote but then the sign that we have not believed is we are still afraid and then there is no performance in our lives those who command results there are many of you that believe you are carrying the healing anointing you have not prayed for one sick body because you are afraid of embarrassment you don't believe it you don't believe it hallelujah I have a passion to get you to a point where you believe the word of God because the Bible says if thou canst believe all things are possible I challenge myself every time I say Lord why am I seeing that I, I, I was doing a Bible study with someone yesterday Day before okay yesterday I think Sandra yes we're having Bible study and we were talking about the life the ministry of Jesus Christ and tears filled my eyes while I was talking because I couldn't deny the fact that my life was far from the Jesus life that I saw this guy was a man of faith nothing moved him he believed the father he believed the word he had such audacity he commanded results believe us what is wrong with us hallelujah I tell you the truth it's easy to feel like you are trying and I understand you are doing your best but it does not negate the fact that this revelation has not yet entered us because when the word enters you I tell you there is a performance I will die believing this thing I'm sharing with you how much of God do you believe many of us have our spiritual life then we have our normal life the one that works with wisdom let's be wise let's reason now don't be stupid so you, we make bold claims but when we step out there there are all kinds of fears and we begin to patch the word of God and, and manifest auxiliary faith. The Lord is asking you a question tonight. Do you have absolute faith in him? Hallelujah. I don't know if I can answer and say, Lord, I have absolute faith in you. Maybe I can say I have faith, but it may not be absolute. 
because I know what absolute faith has done in my Bible I've read my Bible very well and men who had absolute faith they rose beyond limitations and shook their generation they had no internet are you listening to me no people that produce posters look at the life of Jesus for instance the Bible says in the book of Mark that Jesus was in a room and he said the whole city came and gathered in front of the room what what kind of result will a man command like this there are all kinds of excuses we keep giving ourselves read the Bible the, see the secret of ENI is found in Mark 1 2 3 go and read it the Bible says Jesus went to Capernaum there multitudes heard about him and they came Jesus went to the desert the same multitudes came Jesus went by the seaside the same multitudes came Jesus climbed the mountain the same multitudes came same result same power he casted out devils he healed the sick he preached the word he taught the word the performance look at me all of you look up if you were to suddenly see the vision of Jesus Christ the real Jesus and he stood here and Jesus suddenly made an announcement and said I am giving you 10 minutes the first 10 people who come to me whatever their needs are it will be met how many of you will check your we before coming why are you not doing that to me simple I you you do not yet trust that my level of competence has gotten to that place are you listening to me if you are hungry for God you have to get the truth and press to it I assure you listen to me brothers and sisters if Jesus Christ walked here right now before you finish the ministers will gap you because they will fly on his leg and say Jesus you don't know how I've waited I already have my list I'm not about to write and you just drop it every time people heard about Jesus they started laughing you know why they knew the result had come they just started laughing their own issue was to get to see him but your issue is not to see me your issue is that is to ascertain Lord now that I've seen Joshua help him let there be grace that is available this night to at least be able to meet some of my needs I tell you you don't know how it pains me when people come up here and say I wrote seven prayer points in a miracle service two have been answered in my mind I say okay seven minus two is what help me seven minus two is what if you drop your prayer point directly to the person Christ how many will be met tell me how many will be met this is the kind of hunger and honesty that will drive you to the anointing I refuse to give excuses it simply means there is a light that I've not seen there is a depth of anointing I've not stepped into there is a dimension of the operation of the spirit that I've not gotten to yet that's why whether you say Apostle Josh Bishop Josh I won't be misled with all of those nonsense there is work to be done are you listening to me mm. those of you who are already confident I'm laying hands on three people I'm laying hands on five people you stopped reading your Bible that's why pick up your Bible and read it again and be ashamed of your pride and find out that there is work to be done I tell you if ministers knew this the Bible would be the best tool that they will have I refuse to give excuses are you listening to me that my life will make such a mark see we have dwelt in this unbelief to a point that when anybody is exceptional people say this guy is not real oh be careful this Joshua Selman guy is not real I'm warning you now tomorrow don't say it's any kind of thing because people are so complacent the average pastor there are three things that many men of God are looking for and they'll be satisfied in ministry one to have a crowd two 
to at least be able to say something from this Bible. It doesn't matter what it is. Number three, and then let there be at least just one person who will fall. They say, you think I'm playing? Oh, what a shame. What a shame. What a shame. Is that what you think will shake the world? That's not uncommon enough. We are talking about commanding authority over territories. One miracle that, let me tell you something. In the days of the generals, all newspapers was about the generals and the fearful miracles they did. Right now, when last, the man must pay for advert. If you see advert in the newspaper, he paid for it. To say, okay, my program is around. Please just check. Are you listening to me? There are some people in Zaria that have never even heard that there is anything called koinonia. What are we boasting for? Hmm. Look at Elijah. He stands somewhere. The whole city, the whole city didn't hear him. He just said there shall not be rain. The whiplash of drought started making people find out who is responsible for this. I say, one guy, Elijah, one man like this. And the gist started spreading. Elijah, who is he? They said, go and look for him now. And the king says, because the king's ego is, is spoiled, he's embarrassed. He says, go and catch that man. 50 people march and stand. And Elijah is taking fresh air on the mountain. And they interrupt his fellowship. This was a man like you. Are you listening to me? Old covenant for you, new creation. Old covenant. Elijah looks and says, If I be a man of God, let fire come down. Right now, we have different ways of speaking. When you stand, you say, If I be standing in the authority and moving in the office, the department and the office of the Christ, let it come. Fire doesn't come. You're not getting it. We are just teaching congregations English and vocabulary. We are just having a brilliant and an educated but powerless church. Well, right now there's improvement. Everybody is falling everywhere. Everybody is falling everywhere. Just watch TV. A man of signs and wonders. Before they say anything, people just fall. And that's all you have to show the world. Something is wrong. That's all you have to show the world. That a man just fell down, and then the, or now prophecy itself is even him. Come, you are, you are Gladys. You are from the east. Your mother is sick. Your uncle traveled. You are an ABU student. And then the congregation claps. What, what? How? Look, real prophets, this is what they say. There is coming a problem in Zaria, but I stop it. That's a real mandate that you stand and tell the people what Satan wants to do and you stop it. The creative power of the spoken word. We just have a group of revelatory people even the native doctors can create they have helped to give you the one to reveal when are we going to get angry that we are going to begin to command territorial results listen if two dead people how many if two dead people rise in koinonia I assure you if you come by 2.30 next Friday you will stand outside critics look at the bible the Bible says people came and filled where Jesus was sitting. Mark chapter 2. And the Bible says others were standing outside. When Jesus saw the fate of the man that they brought, the Bible says the scribes who came early and were seated in front. They said, why are you forgiving his sins? If they came late, they would have been outside. Even then, they rushed and came early for that meeting. Jesus had no nonsense. He climbed the mountain. Brothers and sisters, human beings like you stayed with a man for three days on the mountain. 
the closest thing to what we are supposed to do is what government officials and politicians are doing go to the house of politicians you will see a man who has five or six children sitting outside you say why is he i'm waiting for his excellency that's the, it's called hunger the man has fruit where he got it is irrelevant he shall has fruit when believers come to church and after one hour very uh, it's not true i tell you the truth is a sign of lack of true fire in the days of Amphi McPherson, listen, she had a program called Stretcher Only. Meaning, if you are not sick, you are not invited for that meeting. What is our the, name? The kind of conferences we have right now business special for only the ones that are successful. Only you are not successful, you are not a businessman, walk outside. The people are already successful, Pastor. Don't lie. It's not your anointing that is making them successful. These guys suffered in the bowels of time and got their money and then you stand and say receive they have it already somebody is budgeting to buy a car of 5 million he has gotten 4.8 you are speaking speaking what takes two months salary to complete and buy his car if I can speak to you and tomorrow they give you a car I'm a real prophet don't go and meet somebody that's already tried if I meet Pastor Williams, I say, hey, Jeep tomorrow, of course. Common sense tells me he's... Ah. Am I challenging you? I know you don't like the message. Sorry you came. You must hear it this night. Koinonia. Where hunger is put in you again. See, a man called St. Patrick. Let me tell you something about St. Patrick. Hallelujah. St. Patrick was such a powerful man. He was a dangerous man. A snake beat in Ireland. A snake beat a, a woman's daughter and she was crying. And St. Patrick was just meandering around the street. And he saw her. He said, Madam, why are you crying? She said, a snake beat her. He said, a snake beat you. Where? Where did the snake go to? Hallelujah. And they showed him the forest. He entered and searched for the snake. He held it. He said, you and your kind, I banish you from this land. Till today, there's no snake in Ireland. Hallelujah. The king got to hear gist about St. Patrick. He said, who is that man? They said, that guy is, we don't even know what to call him. And the king said, what sign will he show me? The king's son died six months. He said, go and call St. Patrick. Six months. They had put him in the grave. When St. Patrick came, true life story, St. Patrick looked. He signed his signature and wrote St. Patrick on the grave. He said, dig it out. That's how they carried that boy out. What are we boasting for? It was St. Patrick that began what you hear in Hubert Angel's channel. Christ in me. Christ beside me. Christ before me. Christ above me. Today we say a man of faith and power and he comes with his big stomach. No revelation. Close heavens. Every kind of thing. He says, well, I was in my hotel room. Or God performed. And we waste people's time telling them the price of suits that we are buying. I'm challenging you tonight. Commanding results. Do you believe in the Lord? There was a monk. They were trying to build their church, a Catholic monk. And I think they made a mistake in the measurement. And then they came and the wood was short. The guy just held the wood and started moving. That's how he drew it and completed it. I tell you the truth. Anthony McPherson who organized programs. The only people invited are those on stretchers. That's a real miracle service, not what we are doing. Charles and Francis Hunter. They work close to some of these dimensions. In a single meeting, they raise 100 wheelchairs. Brothers and sisters, replace all the seats that are in this place. Just imagine in your mind there are wheelchairs and just move them here. Imagine if everybody here were crippled. 
this is the kind of service there are many men of god if you invite them in a service and they see three people on wheelchair they just do as if they didn't see i know my god will heal they are laying hands and you just jump the person and then you say what manner of man is jesus he made the lame to walk i wonder what the lame person is singing and the shadows of peter men lined up in the streets because they said peter is coming peter is coming and i can imagine a woman please come from bed and peter says bless you bless you suddenly you are hearing shouts hallelujah thank you jesus if we have half of that anointing i will put this thing will be a basket a bowl and then you put it you write my name joshua and then my picture will be here you come and touch it lick it put it in your wallet put it in your purse bath with the pour water on it and go and bath madness all those things because we do not understand women shook their generations right now there are men of god who are on tv but nobody knows them they air three times a week as they are saying now we thank you for this broadcast you cannot even remember who preached again the only thing you remember is gloss suit as if they printed it in a, in a printing press noise leaves with no fruit hallelujah am i challenging you because we need to rise friends this is an apostolic generation you cannot be satisfied with what we are seeing what we are doing now is joke i tell you it's not ministry yet archbishop benson idahosa he was driving okay they were driving him an armed robber stopped them back back stop the driver was afraid idahosa just opened his mouth he told the person to open the door for him first he came out the armed robber lie down lie down he just looked at them he said one of three things must happen to you this night either you will be paralyzed you will be blind or you will die but one must happen this night will Lamb brothers ever spokane was called the cleanest city during the time of john g lake you know the way they admit people in shika that's how you come to his hospital you collect a form to prove that you had the healing anointing you will go and bring seven people that you healed that's how he admits if you say you are sensing the call of god upon your life he said go and bring seven people with what used to happen to them and what you have done then he will consider whether you are qualified to be his staff can you imagine that was a yastic now everybody a man with a strong healing anointing i came all the way 50 kilometers to tell you your while they are talking the demons are saying now wow saying before when men were around there was fire you know these demons have been around since they knew the fire upon these men and they ask one another they say ah, when these guys died they didn't transfer anything and all of those men they were called brother this brother that now you call joshua selma an apostle you know i fear that name because i just remember apostle paul apostle smith wigglesworth apostle john g lake apostle saint patrick apostle josh for where for where you won't deceive me no way but many of you are already parading sons and daughters say call me pastor this go and sit down go and sit down in one place and gather yourself together and first ask what god has called you to do say in the name of jesus i believe and yet the bible says in hebrews chapter 11 it says so that they without us 
that means our generation is still coming the bible says this do you know before smith wigglesworth died i'll share with you some stories today before smith wigglesworth died when he was laying hands on lester sumro he told him something he said look make sure you don't die with your anointing he said look for young men that are serious and transfer this anointing to them and then he laid hands on him and began to prophesy he said i see a generation a generation that what we have done will look like a step out of the cave compared to what they are doing apostle babalola cac you see there are many denominations today that don't do not even believe what their founders live for apostle babalola he was said listen he was said that that guy was so powerful a time came when he was preaching and he started lifting literally see the water that the concept of holy water came from him he was thirsty praying on a mountain and there was no water and he struck the rock and said let water come man they are the type you say men to not 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 the, the, the people were saying men we are, we are called you call us children am i challenging you do you know apostle babalola was moving there was a council now this one i attended a pastor's conference by apostle atb williams in kafanchang emmanuel kure's conference and him, and he was saying this he said that apostle babalola when they wanted to call him when people said there's a gentleman that had the fire of god there were certain elders like seven or eight of them they said they don't believe he's called look at the miracles that this man was doing they said they are not yet convinced that he has the anointing in other words this guy is still a joker he's playing ministry all of them prayed and a few said actually they have received confirmation the elders refused they say until god speaks to every one of them one by one before they were agreed one day they were praying together and there was a madman running and disturbing people in the street and apostle babalola just came out from the forest he was just moving in the city not going for a program no protocol no mic he was just meandering around the street and that guy came out and people were running yard matches and was driving people and then the elders were watching the lord told them to watch and they were watching through the window and apostle Baba, when the madman came close to him he said but you are not mad now he collected his matches he said sit down here please that was how those men confirmed that god really called this guy now how do we confirm that god has called a man once you just see a guy that is handsome he looks like Eliab. you just say surely surely and see you see ministers and the body of christ there is no pressure whatsoever on us to press for more you look at a man of god and see that he's absolutely satisfied you even hear some men of god say i'm so fulfilled and he's showing you his watch i'm so fulfilled There are sick people coming there are oppressed people coming and jesus caused that victory he said because you have deceived me you made me to come all the way you made me to do everything i'm doing and you have been deceiving many like that let me tell you there are many people that god himself would dethrone out of ministry and out of certain places of honor because if we keep deceiving god's people and claiming come for miracle service are the people really receiving miracles or do we just celebrate one miracle a fractured hand got healed when i was watching what the media people played i tell you i i was happy but i was angry at the same time or a robot healed people to a point that he was tired they just prayed on a mountain and told people to come and touch it that's the real me now people drink one gallon of water and nothing happens you say drink it prophetic water you drink it you 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 they say take come and buy a special i saw a man of god praying for one woman the anointing oil is like this 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 uh, uh so, so, uh, this pure tag bottle he poured some on her head told her to pour some Hi. what men of god do to people and ask her to drink everything that's how she drank in my presence it was on, on tv 
drank everything. The man said, yes. If you drink oil like that, you will be sick. You will be very sick. We spend over 30 minutes trying to minister to one person. Look at Jesus. I will be made clean. Come on. He saw the demons. Go! And they left. What is wrong? Am I? Is the only me that is having this anger? Many of you are saying, I won't be a man of God. Please turn and face these people. Say, I believe the word of God. The second key. Your faith can be seen, friends. The second key. I'll share this quickly and we'll pray. This is one of the reasons why many people do not gain the anointing to command results. I call it the law of honor. Write it quickly. One day the Lord showed me a scripture. Turn with me to Hebrews 7 verse 1. If you have been sleeping, wake up because your life is about to change. Hebrews. So open your eyes. Open your ears. And then you'll understand that the Lord is here. Open your eyes. Open your ears. And then you'll understand that the Lord is here. Hebrews 7 verse 7. Let me show you. This is one of the biggest secrets of my life. I want to share with you something that will change your life tonight. I tell you, if you believe this, if you believe this, you will be changed forever. Behold, I show you a mystery. Lord, open our eyes. Respect what you are about to hear. <laughs> verse 1. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the most high God who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and what? Blessed him. Number two. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. First being by interpretation king of righteousness and after that also king of Salem which is king of peace. Three. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life but made like unto the son of God abided a priest continually verse 6 but he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes from Abraham and blessed him of all the promises verse 7 read with me together one to go and without all contradiction the less is blessed of the better read it one more time and without all contradiction the less is blessed stand up please stand up just stand up. Pray a prayer in one minute and say, Lord, my life is about to change as I hear this revelation. I humble myself. Let your word come as light. Please pray this prayer just one minute because God is about to change lives right now. God is about to shift levels. Please pray. Oh yes, doors will open forever for certain people. Lord, I pray. I pray. This revelation has changed my life it has changed the lives of many. I pray that men will be commanders of results. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please sit down. Look at this. Listen to me. Let me give you certain revelations. Number one. You must realize that in the kingdom of God, listen, listen to me. The anointing is carried in the kingdom of God through human vessels. Are you listening to me? Human vessels are the carriers of God's power, of God's unction, of God's ability. And the Bible says without contradiction. In other words, this one, you can't argue on it. You can't preach another message about it. He said the lesser is blessed 
of the greater abraham is the father of what many people call the abrahamic covenant the bible makes us to understand that the king came i mean that abraham came from the slaughter of certain people and he spoiled them the bible says he came and he took a tenth of the offering and he blessed one man called melchizedek hallelujah and the bible says melchizedek looked at abraham and blessed abraham and said blessed be abraham possessor of the most high and paul is giving us a revelation here using the life of melchizedek and abraham and he told him he said without contradiction in the realm of the spirit it is only the lesser are you listening to me it's only one who is higher who has the capacity pastor please come who has the capacity to take you and to lift you into his higher place of anointing follow me in the realm of the spirit listen to me only one who is higher than you has the capacity to draw you and the limit to which he can draw you is the limit of his anointing no man can draw you above his anointing are you listening to me that's why when god wanted to swear he looked for one who was higher than him so he could submit to him and say please help me swear to these people when he did not find anybody he said oh, since i'm the only one i swear by myself are you listening to me powerful principle listen listen i want to give you the unbeatable secret the unbeatable secret of the anointing growing in the anointing and financial prosperity when you want to rise you don't sow to people lower than you they can't lift you when you get to your wealthy place this is called charity are you listening to me you sow upwards and then you are called higher are you following me now without contradiction it is only the lesser that receives from the greater hallelujah i want to show you the principle of walking in the anointing i never allow any man who is higher or greater than me do anything in my presence that i can do for many of you you have been misled and deceived that you only give that honor to your pastor or your spiritual father and many of you have passed anointings that can set you free but because of the stereotype of ministry it has to be me my pastor my father my this and that listen to me and without contradiction the lesser is empowered and lifted to the realm of the greater When I saw this scripture, I repented from talking about men of God and people. I want to show you why the doors are shut for many people and many ministries and many individuals. Hallelujah. Listen to me. In 2004, I wanted the anointing so badly. I had been seeing the manifestation of God's spirit in my life. And Reinhard Bonke came for a crusade in Joss. Are you listening to me? Reinhard Bonke came for a crusade in Joss. I left Zaria and I ran to Joss. The first day, there was a mighty manifestation. Hundreds of thousands of people came. Are you listening to me? The second day, I was angry. You know why? Because I didn't serve in that crusade. I knew that when you honor a man, listen to me. Honor opens the door of any man's anointing. You will never receive of the anointing of a man you dishonor and criticize i went pastor listen for six hours i was standing in that crusade ground you know what i was doing i was looking for what to do there was nothing to be done later on i saw them pushing people who were sick i said beautiful i said can i join them they say i'm not part of the committee they train them i said committee or no committee I came from Zaria with a hunger. I was pushing the people and I was praying in tongues. Nobody knew me then. Without controversy, the lesser is blessed of the greater. When I pushed the wheelchairs, I stood there. People were packed.
heart full and i stood there i said lord i honor this servant of yours i know that this man is great i didn't give him any seed but i honored him in my spirit i said lord i believe this guy is a career of an anointing i respect it i believe it i covet it when i stood there renard bonke finished preaching and they they prayed for people for salvation they wanted to pray for baptisms then I had not started praying for people for baptism and i said lord how can one man pray for hundreds of thousands of people and they will receive the holy ghost and i stood i said lord i believe and i will never forget renard bonke was going to drink water suddenly i looked up and for the first time i saw the visible manifestation of the holy spirit i saw a bed that would be as big as this auditorium was just hovering around the people you know his crusades you stand suddenly i saw it had silvery wings and the, the lord just took me to this scripture where elisha told elijah if you can see me if you can see me as i'm taking up suddenly i saw that bed i thought other people were seeing it but i realized that i was the only one who was seeing it do you know by the time i finished the encounter with that manifestation of the holy spirit i turned and i found out that i was already back in the stage I don't know when I turned to face big. and from that day an anointing came upon my life there is no one I pray for for the baptism who does not get filled with the Holy Ghost are you listening to me many of you have cultivated the attitude of dishonoring people I will never forget one time that I went to go and buy was it sugar cane or something and I saw two old women many of you will not honor them because they are not your pastor and i saw the old women just 10 or 15 naira i paid for them and they said you know how old women bless they were speaking and i didn't hear what they said but i will never forget one thing one of the women said he said forever you will walk on gold that's what she told me are you listening to me as you see me like this brothers and sisters i am a product of many encounters and many anointings because i realize everything you have not seen in your life you have not known how to receive it whatever it is that you have not seen in your life you have not yet known how to receive it because it's available are you listening to me before charles and francis hunter died when i heard that they died i cried you know why i cried because i was planning that i was going to go to the u.s and my plan was that i was going to book two weeks with them guess what i wanted to go and do not to go and preach for them the way many of you want to do i wanted to go and scrub their toilets and wash their clothes for two weeks i wanted to beg them to allow me scrub the toilets and wash their clothes for two weeks and without controversy the lesser is blessed of the greater are you listening to me it's a law whoever has what you do not have has the ability to impart it upon you whether it's your roommate whether it's your brother listen there are many barren women who will remain barren because they do not know how to open the doors of destiny if you are a barren woman go and find a woman that has given birth and say madam can i please wash your plate and without controversy the lesser they may not pray for you it's a law that happens automatically are you listening to me hmm. see second chronicles second chronicles chapter 9 verse 1 the bible tells us something because of time i may not read it just write it look up please i studied my bible and i saw that this principle was consistent do you remember the bible talks about solomon pastor please sit down hallelujah the bible says solomon was so blessed he was so wealthy is that correct when his news got round and the queen of sheba heard about him the bible says the queen of sheba gathered seeds what did she do how will you run to a man who is already prosperous and you are carrying seeds without controversy the lesser can bring you into his realm cheaply are 
are you listening to me and the bible says she came and met solomon and when she spoke with solomon the first thing she did there's no time the first thing she did was to acknowledge the fact that solomon was greater than her listen it is not weakness to realize that somebody is better than you in this realm there are people you are better than and there are people who are better than you the ability to acknowledge them will open up their anointing for you are you listening to me she acknowledged that truly there was no man like solomon and guess the next thing she did she packaged her gifts and she gave solomon question how do you bless a man who is already blessed are you listening to me because he has an anointing that can bring you to his realm that woman heard of the fame of solomon and said ah, ah no no i need to find out what is going on and the bible says she sold and solomon gave her everything she needed that's what the bible says are you listening to me if your brother or your sister is not married instead of casting out devils and getting angry go and find a married couple and look at them they just got married and say please um, I bought a small gift to just bless you and without controversy you are fulfilling a law in the spirit suddenly you see yourself walking in the anointing I used to see Benny Hinn I loved him so much I see honor doesn't just mean you package a seed the Bible says honor the Lord with your tithes many of you have been giving your tithes that's why the heavens are not open there is a way you carry it I'm not talking of being sanctimonious that you realize that I'm sowing to someone who is richer than me I'm sowing to someone who is more blessed than me and he will take me that's why the Bible says, my God Paul speaking shall supply your needs according to his riches in glory every time a woman's barrenness is about to finish god will send a man who is higher than her and say give him food what is god doing the widow of Zarephath. see the shunammite woman understood this the moment she perceived he was a prophet of god he said quickly let us build a place and without controversy whatever level you want to get to there is a career of that anointing working in this earth the reason is we have not honored them because some of them are your roommates in class you go to class together but you do not know the difference hallelujah you have been castigating everybody who is married instead of sowing see let me tell you the truth i everybody i see every nice car that i see because i want to buy a car i just say lord thank you for this car if my friend buys a car today i will be the first person to provide fuel for that car i'm not a fool i know this principle are you listening to me you see why we are rich because we provide free bus transport for you i don't know the kinds of anointings that are here and i know that there are some anointings we do not have so we sow into your anointing by providing bus many of you are laughing and wondering why this ministry is increasing these are the laws are you listening to me every time i'm around a man of god when i went to dr Akwami's church to minister it was an honor because he's a father in the land when i entered people were there looking at me oh this is the apostle joshua when i went in front of dr Akwami, i got down on both of my knees i don't know him he's not my spiritual father for some of you who have been misled and misguided with devilish doctrines And I greeted him and then I got up because without controversy the lesser is blessed of the greater are you listening to me many of you sit down and watch men of God on TV and you say Kai this man's realm herself is so bad you have not gotten to where he's getting to you have three members and you are criticizing him there are people who criticize me today and criticize us and never walk in the anointing i tell you you can listen to all my tapes the heaven will remain short that honor is a law are you listening to me look at the myriads of nigerians in abuja and lagos queuing for jobs their yard mate goes to a a lucrative office every day why not wake up early in the morning and polish his shoe and keep it for him 
you may not understand what you are doing but you are tapping into a law i tell you it will not take two weeks they will call you are you listening to me respect this principle i'm teaching you for your information let me give you a little secret about the prosperity of this ministry i'm sowing into the life of living faith i'm sowing into the life of kenneth copeland i'm sowing into the life of benny hin i'm sowing into the life of reinhard bonke i'm sowing into the life of kobus van rensburg i believe them when i got up i went to south africa i was fasting i was praying i didn't go to show that i'm going abroad i had serious business there he was a career of an anointing others were discussing and criticizing i said lord i know there is grace and i went there smith wigglesworth laid his hands on lester sumro are you listening to me and kobus was with lester sumro for one week and he laid his hands on me when i went there kobus looked at me he said i want to connect you to the lineage of the generals and he laid his hands on me three times sorry for all the people who carry every kind of rubbish news it's not by age if you understand the principle you will rise are you listening to me listen to me hear me my mother and my father laid their hands and blessed me for ministry and this is why i can never fail you don't know the hands and the anointings that are responsible for what you are seeing are you listening to me i respect the careers of this anointing i saw into the lives of blessed people Mike Mudok, one of my greatest financial mentors. I don't like him. I don't like him. He's a seed seed man. But he carries something I'm looking for. When he came to Koza, I couldn't, I couldn't make it. I was streaming in my room and praying in tongues for six hours, for three, three hours every day, beginning to the end of that program. I prayed for the internet, what I would have paid for my hotel bills. And some of you just get up and say, how are these people getting the anointing? And all kinds of stories hallelujah rather than sell you when you don't celebrate an anointing forget about walking in it i will never allow a man who is greater than me do what i can do for him i go to a shop to buy something and i see an elderly woman i, I will over my dead body for that woman to pay that money if i can pay he mustn't be a pastor hallelujah you want to raise children you see a woman that raised eight children all of them are disciplined there is an anointing that woman can you can tap into it hallelujah i see ministries that represent the things i want even in the realms of prosperity i couldn't understand the prosperity on oedeko's life i studied this man and read his books i couldn't find the key I said, Lord, what kind of thing is this guy? I mean, what is it? I need to see something there. And the Lord told me, one day you are going to sow into his life. The day the Lord told me I went, I went to Canaan land. Hallelujah. And I sowed into that anointing. I came out to enter the car and the Lord told me, come out. And I came out. He said, kneel down on that ground. I knelt down and I laid my hands. And the Lord said, from today, everywhere you go, the land will open for you. And people keep criticizing we go to cgc is packed full with people we come here packed full blue roof see when you see a man prospering find out what law is being operated it's god that oversees his laws i can't go to a restaurant with somebody that carries something see before all my brothers entered into a relation when they entered into a relationship i was concerned ask them valentine's day i was so into it Many of you are there grumbling and shouting and making noise. My sister is not married. What of me? Don't these guys like me? And you see your roommate who may not be as good looking as you look like. Every time she's cooking. Where are you cutting this food? I'm cooking. I want to sow into an anointing. You are laughing at her. Then you see one clean brother who come out with his prosperity and say she's the one you will marry. And you, you see that God, you are not fair. Let me tell you, life will never change until you change it. For those of you who are waiting for things to change, are you listening to me i'm showing you a law without controversy the lesser is blessed of the greater hallelujah
I spoke to the protocol because we are trusting God for our boss. I told them, they told me that RCF, um, I mean, they were charging us a stipend for the boss. I said, very good. Because I was looking for a way to sow into their life. I'm looking for a boss. We are looking for a boss as a ministry. What do we do? We find a ministry that has what we are looking for and sow into it. Many people sit in Zaria here. They are broke. They are poor. Their ministries are broke. But people are running from Abuja, running from everywhere. They come and catch the fire and sow into the anointing. I'm not talking of seed. It's the law of honor. Are you listening to me? Thank you, Jesus. If you believe this, go and tell your brothers and sisters who are looking for jobs and looking for this and looking for marriage and looking for all of these things. Nothing will change. The Bible says when God saw their faith, faith can be seen. It's hope that cannot be seen. Many people have been doing hope. What they call faith. Sometimes I sit down and I'm watching television. And I watch Benny Hinn, I watch Kobus, I watch all of these people, and I'm kneeling down. We took the leaders, hear me, and all the heads of department, because Commonwealth of Zion Assembly, they have a level of prosperity and excellence that is touching. You will be a wicked person to deny. Hallelujah. Other people were discussing, who are these people who serve? Know this, know that. I told the leaders, Manasseh suggested it, and I said, quickly the heads of department and the ministers we went and we lodged in an expensive hotel in abuja it wasn't because we wanted to waste money the lesser is blessed of the greater when we went there listen to me the head of department went to go and meet the head of department there and walk there the head of protocol went to go and meet them why will you be surprised that we are excellent and without controversy the lesser is blessed I'm showing you a key. I promise you, it will open any door. Every time I am in lack, I find those who are prosperous. Quick, quick with the remaining money. I don't waste my time sitting. I don't waste my time. No, no. Listen, let me tell you something. Listen to me. Hi, Lord. In John 21, the Bible says, Peter said, I want to show you something. Your skill can fail you. Are you listening to me? It was a time of recession. I was saying, Lord, give me a word for this recession. I've had many preachers and God showed me something. Do you know Peter was a fisherman? Realize that there was a time Jesus told him, go and fish and take the mouth from the coin. That means your potentials and your gift is supposed to bring prosperity. However, there are times it can fail. What law do you engage in when it fails? Let me show you. The Bible says Peter went to fish and found out that there was no fish. Suddenly there was no fish. A fisherman who used to fish all the time, there was no fish. And the Bible says when he went, Jesus saw them. Listen to what Jesus tells them in John 21. He said, children. How many people is Jesus older than among the disciples? He said, children. It was a test of honor. Children, have you caught any fish? They said, no. He said, cast your net. That's your past the test. They would have said, children. Peter said, I'm married. They killed all your age mates from two years and below. I'm not older than you with two years old. How can a man call them children? My mother started calling me her father. I promise you, her poultry and her business just expanded. Hey, could it be that you have been missing something? Could it be that your miracle has been passing you? And you have been praying and hitting keys in the spirit without knowing which door is opening. When my mother came here, that's why quickly, before we said anything, I did what? I called her. I said, speak to this work without controversy. When it was time for her to go back, I packaged a dangerous seed and I went and met her. I may be your son, but this is not the issue of son now. I tapped into that grace quickly. Many of you see careers of anointings that you want. And you just keep looking at them all the time. Mukhtar, his laundry services is doing very well. He's a leader. He finished serving from Engineering Students Fellowship. And he's very good. Let me tell you a little history about this guy. Are you listening to me? For one year, 
Mukhtar came and was before he started his business he was dry cleaning my suit for one year one solid year as a seed he knew what he was doing when you see the worship team and all these people doing what they are doing they are tapping into graces there are many of you you are your job is to grumble and complain there are many people that I honor and sow into their lives it's not because they are nice people I look at the weakness of others and get the gold in them I'm interested in the anointing when let me tell you when I'm watching a man that carries something I can slap you if you come to this to, to, to disturb me I don't I'm not the kind of person that is in church before you do it, say, oh I'm seen and you are not getting anything I give my rapt attention my spirit is open I'm saying Lord the guy, the guy may be joking for 30 minutes I'm tired of this joke show me this key and you sit down there there are times I play messages of Benny Hinn I'm not listening to the message I just want to saturate under the anointing and I'm praying in tongues I'm praying in tongues I'm praying in tongues for about one month that was the song that, that was, it was his worship songs that I slept with all through the night they will play all through the night i'm just trying to show you that this is not a mistake do you know that if you honor people final year students we have started our, our meeting with you tomorrow this night many of you see the ministers you just come because they are your colleagues you just tap them ah, edgy alpha i'm not saying you just lie down and lick people's leg but i tell you the truth you can sit down and tap into anointings I never go and see a man that is higher than me empty-handed no matter what happens even if it is 10 naira I must put it in my pocket and at the end of it I'll bless him are you listening to me I want to show you that there are laws and there are principles that are working I repented from castigating people and criticizing people any grace that I see I humble myself I say Lord you have empowered these people suddenly sometimes i listen to the tapes once do you know aside from last week's tape there is no koinonia message i don't listen to i can easily say it's my ministry i download it i don't ask the media to bring it i want it to cost me something i download it and every time i'm prophesying or the man of god is prophesying rather i get down on my knees god is my witness i say lord i believe your servant He's about to speak a word. I believe the anointing he's carrying. I promised myself that for a long time, nobody will sow into this ministry more than me. It's not because it's my ministry. I believe in the anointing that is carrying. Many of you come and you just sit down and look at people. You see the ushers. You see everybody. God is opening doors for them. You're just smiling and looking and complaining and ranting and shouting and doing all kinds of things. I tell you, friends, if you obey this law, there is nothing that will not work for you. Your father was driven out of the job and his brother is still working. That's the time for him to go and greet his brother. Go and greet his brother and say, ah, well done, sir. And when they get to filling station, the remaining 4,000 that is left, carry 2,000 inside and say, please get fuel. Insist that they use your money and sow into the anointing that is working. Do you believe this? Or many of you are still saying, is that all? Do you believe this? I tell you the truth. See, let me tell you. If I were some of you seated here, I promise you, I will never allow any anointing pass me by unnoticed. If I wake up in the morning blind, by evening my eyes would have opened. I will find everybody who is seen and clean their shoe. I will just say, I'm sitting with a rag and water and blind. Everybody whose eyes is open, please come and pass. Let me wash your leg. When God wanted men, he sowed his seed into the earth and Jesus gave birth to a harvest that is still happening till now. We are going to pray. I know we have taken time. But I'm showing you a mystery that will open every door for you. Find careers of your anointing. 
whether it's even if it's only once you meet them in your life they may not be men of god some of them may not even be born again hallelujah you sow into the anointings every seed that comes into my life i divide it and i begin to sow the tithe of this ministry every week each and every week we are sowing it many of you have been giving but you have only been doing charity you have not been rising because you look and say ah god tells you package this seed go and sow it into joshua selman's life he said god for god forbid i'm seeing suits like me i'll go and sow and you see somebody stand with a plate outside and he's begging you and you go and throw 20 naira you'll be rewarded because you did charity but that wealthy place you will not enter it no way it's not done that way are you listening to me during miracle service you are standing some of you are frowning and are just looking these people say why are they always joking call my case instead of you to come and be praying and say lord part of my prayer request there is grace there is grace to receive you can honor a man even without him knowing and you receive that anointing Go and see what koinonia messages are doing in foot mina go and see the kind the rip the miracles and the revival that is happening in foot mina I, I i wasn't even aware until someone started giving me stories i tell you people catching fire but there are some of you who are sitting down here you hear prophecies that will come and you just laugh where i wonder where you think your miracle is coming from When Paul was going to Damascus and he fell, the Bible says God commanded Ananias. In other words, he recognized he was a carrier of that glory. And Ananias said, Brother Paul, God sent me that I should lay my hands on you, that your eyes be open, and that you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And Paul said, Yes, I've seen it in a vision. And he laid hands on him. Many of you come in every week. You see prosperity. You see excellence. You feel God is calling you into ministry. Every time you see every man of God, you come and talk and look and say, Ah, Jakes, I saw you that day at the faculty. And suddenly the door is closed. You will secretly get his tape and listen to And you will find out that the door is not opening. You can't find that key. Are you learning something tonight? graduates forget about that nonsense of trying to look for your uncle or auntie if i were you and we are going to talk tomorrow by 12 right here as soon as you finish go and find somebody that is working polish his shoe while you are polishing god is calling you into ministry you prepare or god told you you marry a minister go and find a pastor william's wife is coming here every week every week you are seeing her after you finish you say ah give me five you just shake her and the door closes and you shake empty hands and somebody can come and say lord if i may but touch the helm of his garment that's how many of you keep sitting here people come from other states less than 30 minutes they have caught fire and caught an anointing are you getting blessed i'm not saying you should give me money i'm blessed you know that and without controversy the lesser is blessed of the greater every time you see people serving you and sowing into you and you are laughing say kai that means i'm a big man you are not wise you should turn quickly and start finding a way there is he that scattereth and increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. I can't be a failure in life. No way. Not when there is one career of an anointing. Hallelujah. When Pastor Biodun was going to bring Dr. Miles Munro, do you know what they did? What I mean, um, um, what's his name? The, Mike Mudok. Do you know what they did? one month before he came they got all his tapes and they made the choir to practice his songs say after me honor 
as soon as he was entering his hotel room a grand piano was there playing the songs he wrote he announced it on air that in all his life and ministry he has gone around the world no ministry has honored him like this the honorarium that they were supposed to give him they doubled it times three and sold it into his life there are people who have been in abuja since 1991 1991 they don't have their building when he came into abuja he went and met the pastor with the largest church and greeted him many of you are there on campus god called me into ministry you are foolishly doing things there are people who have run this race before you you can't come and greet them you see them you just push them i taught somebody and they fell down it will tire you see now it's not it's not like before that they tell somebody no no you see stay back and let go 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 and do ministry hallelujah while on campus we were all already in ministry i tell you we we're men of god but i served in fcs till i finished i was the prayer secretary engineering students fellowship we we're already in ministry doing great things jakes was the president of naka Ejimi was QT, QT, uh, uh, he was in QT. Hallelujah. Manasseh was in faculty of arts. He was prayer secretary. Bishop became the prayer secretary after me, right? And then he became the president of engineering students fellowship. Are you listening to me? We were ministry, but we knew the power of service and tapping into anointings that was higher than us. From there, I became the national prayer secretary of conference of Nigerian Christian engineering students. Then we all were serving. Jakes became the president of some of the people who we got born again. Later became our leaders in FCS. And we still told them, yes, sir. We'll go to their father's church and preach and come and say yes, sir, to them. But we're still saying yes, sir, because it was about office, not person. Are you listening to me? So why will you be surprised today that he and I will never lack people who are serving? Are you listening to me? It's a law and it's a principle. After tonight's meeting, we're going to pray two prayer points. The first prayer point is you are going to ask God and say, Lord, I have allowed the careers of my anointing to pass me by without recognizing them. From today, open my eyes to practice the law of honor. I need to begin to work in uncommon results. There are careers. Rise up on your feet. Somebody's life is changing. I tell you, somebody's life is changing. This is one of the most powerful message you would have heard in 2012. And without controversy, the lesser. I've given you a key tonight. I tell you, it will unlock any door. I don't care what that door is. It will unlock every door. Bakapatakata. Doors of jobs. Doors of ministry. Doors of business. Doors of power. Say Lord I repent. From dishonoring the careers. It may be your mother. It may be your father. It may be somebody by the roadside. It may be an elderly woman somewhere. An elderly man somewhere. It may be your head of department. It may be people around. Look beyond the man. See an anointing that can take you to a new level. And without controversy. The lesser is empowered, enriched, blessed, lifted, glorified, honored by the greater. Let this key open a door for you. Doors of greatness, doors of new anointings, doors of increase, doors of business those of marriage those of family those of jobs 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you are going to pray and you are going to prophesy and say in the name of Jesus, I honor every career of the anointing that I need in my life. You may not meet some of them for the rest of your life, but you can honor them and it can be recorded in the spirit. It may be your mother. It may be a woman that gave birth to a good or a woman that has a good husband. You are looking for a good husband. You want a new car. You want a new job. You want promotion. You don't get it by dishonor. Some vessels are unto honor. Some vessels are unto dishonor. If you can recognize this, you are a wise man. You are a wise woman. We are rounding up. Come on, pray. Bataka posatai. Mam preteke pariyadabash. Sekete baladabash. Lord, I serve with my seed. I serve with my time. I serve with good report. In the name of Jesus. Bateke posia. I recognize anointings. I respect anointings. Mam pokoto pekete. Rekete koli adabashia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. When you look at a man, you may not know when you see a man who is anointed, find out the encounters that brought that man to that level. Are you listening to me? Find out what level of grace Someone may come up the podium or he may preach on TV. He may not have the utterance you are looking for. Find out what brought him on TV that you have not yet gone. Somebody may come up here and may be preaching in Hausa and you are having to, they are having to interpret and you laugh and say, hey, this guy cannot preach. You are there seated at the back. The person is there in front. There must be something he carried. I tell you, if you don't recognize this, see let me tell you honor is not something you say uh, I did it in my heart lie lie is a law somebody will do it for you too so you have to honor any man not just a pastor whoever carries what you don't carry respect the sacrifice that brought it and you will see that you are stepping into it listen let me give you a secret for those of you who are preachers Every time you go to preach in a place and you see someone who is higher than you in the anointing, recognize the grace of God upon that man. The meeting has opened unto you. If you come with arrogance, if I come today and Manasseh is occupying a higher spiritual position than me and I refuse to recognize him, I promise you, you will struggle in that meeting. The heavens will close. I don't care what kind of anointing you carry. It's a loss. People don't know. No matter who you are, you won't change it. Many of you after now may need to send texts to certain people you have insulted, careers of your anointing. When they speak, they spit on your face because of how they talk. That's none of your business. You are looking for something. God knows why he didn't put it inside you and put it inside them. Hallelujah. I have a big burden because there are certain kinds of anointings in this house. I have not seen in the lives of many people yet and I know that is because many of you either do not honor it and do not respect it I'm not talking of lying and rolling on the floor my greatest my greatest desire is not to be a superstar Joshua Selman standing I tell you my greatest desire is that every one of you there are many anointings that are for the taking many of you don't know how to receive and let me tell you something the careers of your anointing are not always within your reach. Every day, the price is more. Every day, the price is more. A day will come, it will cost you more than it's costing you right now. I tell you the truth. 
there are many people for instance with all humility i when i used to have a lot of time you remember those times we we'll sit down sometimes some of the ministers were around but right now we don't have that luxury every day it keeps moving further if you don't see it a time will come elijah will move you are looking you will not see the chariot someone will come from behind and see the chariot and carry a mantle hallelujah very soon many generals of god are leaving zaria many of you are the ones who will carry the next fire of revival in your arrogance and pompousness you will never look and say there are anointings what did these people carry that made them shake the campus what did these people carry in the midst of persecution in the midst of pain and say lord would you cause that there be a rain on my life what keys open the door of prosperity what keys open the door of influence many of you don't know what is bringing people inside and outside you are busy castigating and say eh, crowd does not matter instead of you to say lord there is a key once upon a time these people were not there what brought them the train is moving and for those who can see you can catch something and ride on it without controversy the lesser I tell you a secret of commanding results you will command results God put results on earth to be reproduced not to be stood with one man he who has an ear tonight hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.